This is CPM Pre-Calculus Chapter 2, Number 72. So we're asked to express the given, the given series using sigma notation, right? Then evaluate the sums with your program or by hand. All right, so the first one we're given is 4 plus 8 plus 12 plus 16 plus 20. Okay, so what do we want to check for first? Well, first we want to see is this a linear series. What that means is what do we add to each term to get the next term and if it's the same value we add each time then it's a linear series so to get to 8 from 4 we're adding 4 to get to 12 from 8 again we're adding 4 16 minus 12 again add 4 and add 4 All right since we're adding 4 right each time to get the next term We call this a linear series, okay? Because we're adding some constant value. So when we have a linear series, linear series, that just means that we can find the expression in sigma notation, right? Going from some k value starting at k is equal to, I don't know, you can start anywhere you want. And we have one, two, three, four, five values, as long as it's a whole number and there are five of them. So we could start from zero, we could start from one, we could start from 20. Let's go ahead and start from 20 just to make this one fun. Okay, so we start from 20, This then this is term 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Okay, so then how do we get the expression here? All right, to get the expression here, all we need we need to do is know the first term and then also what we're adding because it's linear okay so since we're adding 4 and the first term is 4 okay those are the things we need to know okay because a linear series is basically going to take the form of the expression is going to be a plus b times our index k all right so at k is equal to, or we're starting at 20, right? a plus bk is equal to the first term, which is 4, all right? Also, we know b is basically what we're adding each time, so b is 4. So we can substitute these values in. We have a plus b is 4 times k, we know is 20, equals to 4, okay? So that's a plus... 80 equals to 4, subtract 80 from both sides, we get A is equal to negative 76, okay? So that makes us be able to say we have a linear series with the expression, argument, or function equal to, instead of A, we have negative 76, plus instead of B, we have 4, okay? So this right here, we want to put over here. So negative 76 plus 4 times k. And this is our <coughs> series using sigma notation. So let's go ahead and check this. Right? So let's bring out our calculator. I'm going to run the sum plus program. I'm going to start with x is 20, going to tw 24. And my argument is going to be negative 76 plus 4 times x, right? I'm using x instead of k. And that's equal to 60. So let's go ahead and check this because we can easily add these five numbers. So 4 plus 8 plus 12 plus 16 plus 20 equals to 60, right? We could have easily done this another way using k is equal to 1 or 0, right? We said from 1, then we would want 5 terms, so starting from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? What would our expression here be? Well, again, we would use the same method that we did over here, right? So I'm going to just show that this is a different part. We know a plus bk, because it's linear series, it's a linear series, so this is the form of the expression. So at k is equal to 1 now, 
a plus b plus a plus bk is equal to 4, because that's the first number in our series, right? So then all we need to do is we know b is equal to 4 because we're adding 4 each time. So this is a plus 4 times 1 equals to 4, right? So a plus 4 equals to 4, subtract 4 from both sides, and we get a is equal to 0. So that gives us the linear series with the function 0 plus 4k, which is just 4k. And this is another equivalent way to represent this series. So let's go ahead and check it in our calculator using sum plus. This time we're starting with 1, going to 5, and our argument is now 4x. And we still get 60, right? All right. Let's clear this and go on to part B, because these were just two examples for doing part A. Okay, so part B, we want a series in sigma notation from this series right here. So let's check if it's linear. From 1 to 2, what do we do? We're adding 1 to get here. Um, are we adding 1 to get from 2 to 4? No, we're adding 2. Right, 2 plus 2 gives us 4. To get to 8, 4 plus 4 is equal to 8. To get to 16, 8 plus 8 is 16. 16 plus 16, right, equals 32. Well, that's not a linear series, but it does help me see a pattern, right? I'm basically adding the value to itself to get the next number, right? So we can guess if this series was one digit longer, or I mean, had one more term, it would be 32 plus 32, which is 64. Okay, so that's one hint. Is there any other pattern that you can see? Um, hmm. Well, I see a pattern. This, these are all multiples of two, right? This is just two times two, or two squared. This is two times two times two, or two cubed. 2 is just 2 to the power of 1, 16 is 2 to the power of 4, 32 is 2 to the power of 5. 1 I could even say is 2 to the power of 0, right, because anything to the power of 0 is 1. So right away this would allow me to make the series starting at 0, right, the index 0, I'm going to now use A, yeah A is 0, and then we're going from 0 one, two, three, four, five. I can go from a is zero to five, and my expression is just going to be two to the power of a, right? So this is one very valid expression in using sigma notation. Let's go ahead and see the sum, right? Let's run it. X, we're starting now at zero, going to five, and our expression is two to the power of x. Right, because I don't use a, I use x for this, and that's equal to 63. Oops, let's write 60, 63 better, and let's check it. Right, this is uh, just a few numbers: one plus two, plus four, plus eight, plus sixteen, plus thirty-two. Sixty-three. So we are right. Right, doing it by hand or using our expression works. All right. Let's move on to part C. So part C is asking us, what is this series represented in sigma notation? So let's check if it's linear. When we're, when we're getting the next term, what are we adding each time? So from 2 to 4, I'm adding 2. 4 to 6, adding 2. All right, adding 2. So yes, that's telling me it's then a linear series, right? And that allows me to write it in this form. Sigma notation starting at, I don't know, I'm going to start with j is equal to any value. I'm going to just use 1 to the end. Well, I don't know where we're stopping. So let me leave that blank for now. Because a linear series allows me to figure out the expression and the stop index pretty easy. So let's use it to find the expression. Well, we know when j is 1, right, our output is going to be 2. 
So it's going to be in the form of a plus b times j, right? Where b is equal to 2 because that's what we're adding each time, right? What is added each term, right? So then we could say at j is equal to 1, we know a plus b times j is equal to 2 because that's the first term. We can plug in what we know. We know b is 2 and j is 1. So a plus 2 equals to 2. Subtract 2 from both sides, we get a is equal to 0. So that tells us the expression is a is now 0 plus b is 2 times j or just 2j. Okay? So I can fill in the expression here as 2j, but I still don't know where the index stops. Well, since we know that there are many terms, right? Let's say we don't know how many, but we know the last one is 200. Since we know the last one, so last index, right? We know at j, the last j, we know a plus bj is equal to 200, right? And we know a is 0 b is 2, so a plus 2j is equal to 200. Solving for j, we could it's just 2j equals to 200. Divide both sides by 2, and you get j is equal to 100. So this right now is telling you, well, when we're going up and the, the term equals to 200, well, j is equal to 100 to get that term. Okay, So to get 200, this has to be term number 100. So we can go ahead and say, well, our last right number in the index is 100. And I don't want to add up 100 numbers, so I'm glad I have my program. I'm going to use it, sum plus. I'm going to start with the variable starting at index is 1 to 100. And it's going to be 2 times x, right? Because we're not using j. Wait a few seconds. And this sum is equal to 10,100. All right. And that is correct. And remember, the linear series has these shortcuts to find the expression and the index stop. All right. So this ends CPM Precalculus Chapter 2, Number 72.